Hello viewers, welcome back. It's Dale from Daily Retro. We have a second video. Yesterday we went to my local retro game shop, so this video is sort of a pickups video. Should just mention the name of the retro shop, so it's Retro Games HQ in Swindon. It's about 40 minutes drive from us, but it's the biggest sort of local retro shop. Um, we advise all of you to go and shop at your local retro shop because they've been shut for a long, long, long time now. Yeah, they've been given small government grants, but it's not enough to tie them over, so go and support your local shop if you can. Pete's also a really knowledgeable guy. He owns the shop. He's sort of the sole owner. He's at the back of his family music shop. So if you get in touch with him on his Facebook channel, he'll always be accommodating to when you're visiting. Just before I roll the footage of what we found in the shop, I'll just say it's always advisable to make a list before you go in these types of shops, or otherwise you're going to just end up spending an absolute fortune. Um, it is really fun digging around, see what you can find. You'll see my wife on her hands and knees trying to get her game out from a, a back of a cupboard, which was uh, surrounded by Master System games. So we'll show you that for a bit of a laugh. <laughs> um, but for now, here's the footage. So there's two floors to Pete's shop. This is the ground floor. You've generally got the loose N64 carts, the SNES carts, the PlayStation 2 games, PlayStation 3, and mostly Sega. So there's Dreamcast, Master System, Mega Drive. Obviously, most of the time I've got a fairly big Mega Drive list because that's what I like to collect most. Um, but there's usually some Master System games on there, which you'll see later in the video. Apologies if this is not the smoothest recording you've ever seen, but it was using my Pixel 5 phone, not my DSLR camera like I use for my games room videos. As I mentioned, I generally go into a beat shop with a little list of games I want to get. He's not always got all of them, but it's nice to have a little list just to keep me on track. There are the occasional games I'll pick up that just stand out because I've heard other YouTubers talking about them, so if I'm feeling like I haven't bought enough, then I'll pick something extra up like that. So the footage you see here is the second floor of the shop bit of a bigger space, Pete has only just started to expand into it, eventually all of the shops going to be up here, wife enjoying herself as well. Got those arcades which are multi-cabs so bring your friends or your other half along and they can play on those whilst you browse which is always good. On this particular day I was looking for a, a few different Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games, um, so I was looking at that collection. If you're watching this and seeing a game you would have loved to have snapped up, um, just let me know which one it was and what platform in the comments down below. On this specific day I was searching for about four or five different Mega Drive games I think, which was why I spent the majority of my time down here. So coming up is a little clip of my wife helping me to find Gauntlet on the Master System which was hidden behind this other pile of Master System games. <laughs> Pretty chuffed she found it but unfortunately it didn't come with a manual and I only really collect complete in box games so that was a no go even though it was a fairly good price considering it didn't have the manual. So we're back from Retro Games HQ in Swindon. I've picked up a fair few games today, starting off with uh, one Master System game and three Mega Drive games. So the only reason I've started collecting Master System is because the analog Mega SG, which is my FPGA hardware emulator, has a Master System adapter so it can play Master System games as well as Mega Drive games. Um, that's the little adapter if you see it there. Just basically means the the, the nice wide pins on the Mega Drive are now suited to the narrower pins you can find on the Master System. So, Master System game was Super Monaco GP, which is a really good 
old F1 game, boxed complete. Always like to buy them box complete just so I know what I'm doing, reading the instructions, you get a bit of nostalgia, it's a bit nicer than having to go on Google and search for instructions and print them out and whatnot. So that was quite cheap that one, I think it was about $4.99. Um, on to Mega Drive, so we've got a game that I'm pretty sure I used to own and played, just sold it when me and my brother were very young and didn't really understand that it would sort of be a nostalgic thing to keep. So I've got Lemmings, which is an action puzzle game, which is very fun. Uh, you basically control lots of different uh, minions that walk off clips dumbly if you don't build bridges for them. Um, again, it's uh, pretty minty the case and it's box complete. Honestly, the manual looks like brand new to be honest and I always check the inside of the carts and yeah it looks immaculate it looks like it used to be collected by someone before they sold it on to Pete. So a bit of an extra bonus with the Lemmings complete in box game I was looking for some posters to fill the white space in the games room and obviously I need some something to sort of go with my love of the Sega Mega Drive so I was thinking of buying a Sega, Sega poster off eBay. Turns out I didn't need to because I opened this lemons case and here was this double sided Sega poster. So we've got, if I unfold it, um, Sonic the Hedgehog. And then on the other side, which is probably the side I'm going to display because it's got all the different games, is uh, Mega Drive right at the top and all the different genres and different games. Um, as you can see. I'll probably try and put it in a nice frame at some point so that it goes nice and flat and you don't see all these creases and then it'll probably go near the Mega Drive in the corner of the room over there. Next though we've got Marble Madness. It's, this was bought mainly for me and my wife to play together to be honest. It's a really fun two-player game which is on a lot of different platforms but the first platform I ever remember playing it on was the Mega Drive. Um, it's a two player puzzle game where you sort of roll around as marbles and you've got to complete the levels in certain ways and you, there's no drop damage if you fall you start again the whole level sort of thing. Um, again it's box complete, even has this little uh, insert to register your product with electronics art, arts in Slough which is probably now gone. <laughs> So Marble Madness was $8.99, but again the case is in pretty amazing shape. You generally find that Mega Drive games have still got a little tab on the top of them, they've been well looked after. And finally, this is probably the most amount of money I've ever spent on a Mega Drive game, but I've had so many good things, it's Hellfire. This is an R-type sort of game, so if you've ever played R-type in an arcade, it's a side-scrolling space shooter. Um, lots of fingers going on on the screen at one time. You might be able to see from the uh, box art. Um, this was £40, so basically like buying a brand new modern game to be honest. Again, box complete. It's in really minty condition. Natasha thought it was owned by a smoker, but it turns out it's just it's not been opened in so long it smells old, but <laughs> if you know that smell. Really proud of that and can't wait to play it on the Mega SG most likely. And moving on to my second favourite cartridge system which is the N64. I generally like to, as you might have seen in my games room video, I like to put them in these little uh, cartridge cases because the N64 original carts they came in cardboard boxes as is, as did the SNES games so it's really expensive to buy these good condition cardboard boxes because they're not as easy to last this amount of time so I like to buy these they're about £10 for about 10 they're not, not that expensive um, and the end result is you get a cart that's got the nice box art um, and then you can put up actually on a, on a flat shelf and display it or on anything that's flat 
which is quite nice. For the games I actually bought, we've got um, this is a pretty cheap one to be honest, but I've heard good reviews. It's F1 World Grand Prix, so it's one of the first 3D F1 games from the 64-bit era. Um, it was only 3.99, so it's a pretty cheap pickup. Um, I always open them up inside just to check there's no batteries or any um, dirtiness on the cartridge contacts. Um, but yeah, that's the first one. Not that exciting, but I'm sure you might get more excited by it than some of the others. So we've got Donkey Kong 64, which I've wanted to get for quite a while. Really good platforming game. 9, 10 out of 10 on most websites. Um, this one's quite expensive for what it is. It was nearly £20 unboxed, um, which is not too bad for a really good long game. Yeah, can't wait to play it because I love Donkey Kong. <laughs> Penultimately, we've got um, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire, which was about £8, I think. Quite a common game. You'd only really play it if you really, really like Star Wars games, and I do. I've just finished playing Jedi Fallen Order on PS4, which was absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play that. I've not really heard that many things about it, but it looks like a good first Star Wars 3D game. And lastly, we've got a quite a famous game which is made by Rareware, who also made uh, Banjo Tooie and Banjo Kazooie and GoldenEye, I think, which are all very famous N64 games. They've also made Perfect Dark, which is an action horror style game. I don't think it was too expensive, I think it was about nine, £10. And it's just known as being a very unique horror game, uh, one of the first on the N64. Um, it actually utilises the memory pack, which is one of the first ever games to do so as well. So lastly, for the games I bought from Pete, um, we've got a Wii U title. Wii U was not a very popular console, but did have some really good games. So we've got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which is has a co-op campaign, which is great for me and the wife to play together. Um, absolute mint condition, comes with the inserts. The disc was absolutely scratch free. Um, I think it was £15, which is pretty good. You'll generally find that we get Wii U games are a lot cheaper than the Switch ports of them. So, so for instance, the Super Smash Bros is about four times the price on Switch because Switch is cottoned on more as a more popular console, whereas if you buy it on Wii U, it's about £20. Lastly, we've got some magazines. So I, I wanted a few retro magazines to sort of chill, chill in the games room with, and you can sort of take yourself back in time. Um, so I bought a couple of these from the from the shop. We've got an official one official Nintendo magazine, which uh, features Pokemon Snap, which is one of my favourite N64 titles. Uh, I think this is from September 2000, so almost 21 years old but in very good condition and then we've got three N64 magazines so I think I put them in order so we've got a May 2000 issue which is featured Pokemon Stadium which is one of my favourite games of all time uh, one of them had a very funny advert on so I'll show you that in a sec this is April 1999's N64 magazine, so it's got the 1999 Reader's Awards, so it's got the top 20 N64 games at that period in time, which is really cool. Very funny, slightly sexist <laughs> advert on the back, as you might see there, for Dr. Pepper. Uh, not sure that would be allowed nowadays. <laughs> and lastly, we've got... Uh, a 1998 issue from February of the N64 magazine which has Yoshi's story um, which will I'm right here um, and yeah I really like Yoshi games so I thought I'd pick that up so lastly we've got a fun funny display piece that my wife managed to wangle from <laughs> spotting that Pete had two of them so we've got a very old Donkey Kong plush <laughs> Pretty sure it's from either early 2000s or late 90s. Um, it was only about 15 pounds, but 
really cool and I really like Donkey Kong so I thought I'd have one to display alongside the Yoshi and Koopa Trooper that I've got at the top of the shelf. So that's it for this episode, uh, those were all my pickups from Retro Games HQ in Swindon. I'll just quickly show you this last little unit that I've added to the games room so it's got a little bit of space for expansion. Um, it's just a CD DVD unit that is sort of 16 centimeters depth, so you can fit the discs cases of most uh, platforms in it because um, most are the same width as DVDs. And you can see that's cleared a bit of space for me to add to my Mega Drive collection and at the top there for more display pieces. Um, I'm hopeful I'll be able to put the Mega Drive poster sort of near the Mega Drive box and the consoles which would be nice but for now um, that's it and look forward to seeing you in the next video hopefully you'll be doing some more retro game shop pickup videos soon and the video for uh, more in-depth analysis of my games room tech setup will be with you guys within the next week or so cheers <laughs>